I'm gonna show another support. Why she said, "Ooh, boy, you on this support thing, man? <laughs> let me tell you, man. Come on, what up, E? Um, <laughs> let's just say, and God forbid, I even hate saying this, but let's say something happened where I need to be taken care of. Right? Do you know my wife is gonna take care of me? I'm talking about bathe me all this here. Now she gonna have a boyfriend, but <laughs> but that ain't the point. That ain't the point. <laughs> We talking about the support of me. <laughs> she, I'm just saying because she she gonna, she gonna make sure I'm fed, I'm bathed, and all that before she go out. Why? Why you say she got a boyfriend? Oh come on, that's my wife. I know my wife. <laughs> Man, my wife want to get dressed. She like go out. You know what I'm saying? Have a happy drink. Um, yeah, cause his happy drinks is. So, but you gonna have a boyfriend? Oh, oh, most definitely. You gonna be okay with it? I, I what can I do? <laughs> I'm 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 burned down and heavy laden. I mean I'm I'm bedridden. I can't do nothing but say, man, thank you and 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 pass me that lemonade or, or whatever. I mean, I can't do nothing. Love is a treasure chest, but once opened, our hearts become vulnerable. I I went back to Vegas. It was this guy. He appeared as a friend. Sure enough, it led to infidelity. Alignment can't be ignored. We talked about certain topics as far as having kids. She didn't want to have kids. Um, and that was one of the red flags. And I know you desire marriage. So I think it's best you move on with your life. What you do, Lisa? What you do? I told him, okay. <laughs> she didn't ask me why. <laughs> I knew several other women's bodies better than I knew my own. I've, I watched their videos of them having sex, so I would try to imitate that. No discussion is off limits. Dear Future Wifey Podcast brings healing. You inspire us to try God a little bit more. Up and through this platform, I have realized that it's possible. It's possible to love again. The conversations have really helped me to change my perspective on relationships. Season 7 is all about tough topics. I'm Materis R. Winfield, and welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Materis R. Winfield. Listen, this is Season 7, and we call this Tough Topics. But before we get started, are you still shacking up with us? Come on, this is Season 7. If you're still shacking up with us, can you hit that subscription button and subscribe? Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes. Let's go ahead and hit 500K this season. I've, um, we're at, what, 417,000 or something? Let's go ahead and hit 500,000 this season. That would be absolutely amazing. Um, if you haven't registered for the healing retreat, we still have a couple of spots available. So make sure that you visit the link in the description and put your deposit down so you can come out and join us. We're going to have an amazing time in Los Cabos with my boy Bashe Williams and myself. Uh, this is going to be pretty dope. I'm really looking forward to this, and uh, we're going to bring healing to the mind, body, and soul. So make sure you check that out. We're partnered up with I Can't Wait to Travel. So a lot of y'all were upset when you missed the Jamaica trip. Well, we're doing this again in November, so visit the link in the bio. Well, today's guest, he's no stranger to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Uh, y'all absolutely love this dude. And uh, season, I guess that was a miracle. Uh, season five, season five of it. So, without further ado, welcome to Dear Future Wifey Podcast. My homie, Marcus Wiley, y'all. What up? You in this thing again? I'm in here, and things has changed. Yeah, you know we got a little set. You know what I'm saying? A little, little, little come up, a little different. Yeah, I, mean, I could tell that um, money, not money coming, but that God is moving with the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I mean, I'm just looking at you. You know, Gucci on your feet and. <laughs> Versace on your left wrist, <laughs> Van Cleef's around your neck and other wrists. Any man that come out here, what color is this? Aqua. I don't know what color Turquoise. is this. Turquoise. Turquoise. I don't know. It's like yeah, a, that, that like just sea let me know. Sea green. Hey, sea green. Yeah. That let me know the Lord is moving. He's moving because it's sea green. I'm trophies. <laughs> come on, trophies. You know we got this. We got this Telly Award for the wig falling off. Oh, we, yeah, We yeah. got it for the wig falling off, and we got it for best podcast. Well, congratulations. Yeah, thank you so much. How the letter write? Look, we even got tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, we've been spilling tea on the couch, but now we actually can drink it. We can actually drink it for the Lord. God is moving. So, Marcus, this is a season of tough topics, and we're going to just jump right in. Okay. We're going to call this support. A lot of people told me when you were on the podcast last time, they said, yeah. bring Marcus back, but next time, bring his wife. Mm. So where is she at? 
Whoo, first of all, tell the people stay out of my business. Uh now, nah. <laughs> my wife is actually right now, she's in Indianapolis at the Delta Convention. Okay. That's she, that's, yeah. that's where she is right now. But my wife this is not her thing. She don't want to do this. So I want to know, are you married? Because, you know, because you, you can always say you got a wife, but we ain't never seen her. So how are we going to believe you? If I ain't married, I've wasted 25 long years. You hear me? Uh, yeah, I'm married, you know, but, you know, she support me in other ways. That Like this is, um, she don't like talking about, you know, sitting up here being, um, crucified or interviewed, I know, <laughs> whichever way you want to see it. She don't like being you know, interviewed and talking like that. She well, say that's my thing. In your defense, I talked to her and she was like saying, ah, that's his thing. I, yeah. don't, I, don't, I don't do that. <laughs> um, which is interesting because we want to talk about support. Okay. You know, uh, we hear so much about support. We hear stuff about the uh, man taking care of the household 100% yeah. financially yeah. and then the woman plays her role. And yeah. so I want to have a brother-to-brother -brother conversation about what support looks like. You're wife what people would deem as support is while you're doing this stuff talking about love and relationships why don't you have your wife there yeah um that's what support may look like to yeah. them yeah the but optics what, yeah so 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 what would you say about that well let me first start with the optics yeah the optics um so i'm a church boy as everybody know church guy i remember wives wasn't even visible Wives and their husbands start becoming visible maybe around the early 2000s, okay? You said On, visible. Visible. Only time you would see the first lady was at the pastor's anniversary. <laughs> her and her husband had a same pattern, material on, <laughs> with the two chairs. You know what I'm saying? Because it was a day that the church <laughs> would shower them with stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, man, when my daddy went to go preach somewhere, my mama, they weren't on the fly like this here. It was just my daddy. You understand what I'm saying? And so now, somewhere around the early 2000s to the mid 2000s or whatever, somebody said, you know, it looks better having your other half with you. And it does. I'm not going to lie. It does. Yeah. But just because it looks better, it don't mean that that's, you know, what they want to do. I'm going to give you a point in case. Watch this. Quick story. My wife, she sings. Yeah. She's over the choir at our church. Praise team, all that type of stuff. So now... My wife comes to me a couple of years ago and say, Marcus, I want to make an EP. I put the money into the project. Got the project played on the Yolanda Adams Morning Show. Churches started calling our office, Wildwood Entertainment. Hey, we want you to do comedy and your wife to sing. Oh, that's perfect. You know what my wife told me? What? I don't want to do that. I said, then why did you make the EP, ma'am? She said, it was, I just wanted my bucket list. I just wanted to do something. You understand know what I'm saying? So here I am. I'm getting ready to go all in because I'm looking at dollar signs. Exactly. Oh, yeah, this is wife. Yeah. Me, we coming together. We're a team about Perfect to make situation. money. Ministry going for yeah. Now my wife said, I don't want to do it. My wife like being with her children. So ah, she, how about that? Not with the nanny, with the children. My wife like being with the children. She don't want to lead them kids and don't want to, and you know, ain't finna pack them all over the world either. She just tell me, hey man, go make people laugh, get that check, and come on back home. So she just wanted to make an album. Bucket list. And can she sing? Yes. And so she did She's all good. that. And people and people were wanting to book her. She didn't do Pe not one engagement. Not one engagement. People are calling my manager. They want Marcus and Erica. And Erica is saying, I don't want it. Just like with churches, I, I fly out of town a lot, of course. Churches, they say, why you didn't bring your wife? I say, why you didn't fly? You flew me. I mean, why you didn't get in touch with her? <laughs> fly her. Y'all, everybody want to see you. Why we want to meet you. Why want to see your wife? Fly her. I mean. <laughs> Will she come? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Now, she come with me on certain shows, you know, she gonna, she's going to come, but. That's not how she support me. So getting to your question. Yeah. Supporting to me, I think, is one, believing in me. I think that's major. Yeah, it is. You know, uh, and she believe and she believe in me. You know what I'm saying? And I believe everything I say. Yeah. No, no, no. That's stupidity. 
She, hold on, hold on. Why, you gonna, why you gonna say that's stupidity if I don't believe what you say? I mean, come on, because I'm human. I mean, I'm not right all the time, nor am I telling the truth all the time. And so, so. Mark, you don't wanna say that. You don't, you, don't, you don't wanna say you don't be telling the truth all the time. Yeah, I mean, well, see, I'm a comedian, so I tell stories. See, truths, see, lies hurt people. But stories entertain people. You understand what I'm saying? So I might tell her a story, not necessarily true, but it's a story. And she look at me like, boy, if you don't get out of here with Joe lying, you know? <laughs> but no, but I'm just saying, but she believes in me. Yeah. Babe, you can do that. Babe, I... I see what you're saying. I'm behind you, blah, whatever. I'm a support. That's that's the way I feel like. That's one way, rather. Yeah. Not the only way, you know, but uh, that's big. Let me ask you that. Was there ever a time in y'all's life, whether y'all were dating or married, where you didn't feel that she supported you as far as believing in you? Never. Really? Man, my wife into me, bro. And I thoroughly appreciate that. Oh, I love that. She into me. Like, like, and don't get wrong, I'm in her, but we talking about her right yeah. now. I'm saying she's into me. Like, how you how you feeling? And okay, I'm gonna give you another one. I'm gonna show you another thing about support. Um, this had to be maybe a little over 10 years ago. This is when reality TV shows was really. So they were gonna do this young fly and saved. It was a reality show. The people who names came up were like Ken Jones. Dietrich Haddon, yeah. Isaac Curry, James Fortune, Marcus D. Wiley, you know, others as well. Yeah. So we had these Zoom or Skype. This one, Skype was the thing. Yeah. We had these Skype interviews. And they were trying to find out, hey, what is the thing in your marriage that you all have struggled with and overcome? But it's like they were being messy. Yeah. Like they needed some dirt yeah. on us. And so, you know, me and my wife, we was united front. We was like, oh, man, yeah, we good. I married straight, but y'all never had problem. No, nah. I mean we, we just don't. We ain't never had no problem because we don't even know them. And so, <laughs> yeah, so we, so we, ain't, we ain't finna just divulge, you know, bid. We don't know you. And so, anyway, we know you. my wife, after we got off, maybe the third interview, Zoom. I mean Skype interview. My wife came with me. And she said, "Bae, do you really want to be on a reality TV show?" I said, man, not really, but I think this is making further the brand. You yeah. know, some other things can come from it. She said, watch this. I'm going to show you support. But can your life be on a reality TV show? My life? She's like, yeah, I mean, you know, them cameras following you everywhere you go. And then, I mean, can you? I said, good looking at <laughs> I said, good looking at, and it ain't that. <laughs> Why is it? Because people, oh, yeah, what, what, what you doing? No, it ain't that you're hiding something. It's just that who life? Are you with me? And I yeah. know now that I know more about reality TV shows, I know it's yeah, it's awesome. It, it, it yeah. ain't everywhere, yeah. but 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 who life can withstand that? Yes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean when Bill Clinton got into that truck back in the day, Monica Lewinsky. I read in the report they did a forty-six million dollar investigation. Who life can withstand a forty-six million dollar investigation? Them jokers spend forty-six million dollars. People out here them. homeless. People out here jobless. You spend forty-six you know million how crazy that's trying that's to find out what this man did. Now you could have went in my neighborhood and spent <laughs> four to six dollars and found out everything you need to know about. <laughs> <laughs> from, a <laughs> from a crackhead. From a crackhead. And that's what I'm I so, you know, so when she was just saying, do you want that type of attention? And even though minutes. I'm a comedian, I'm, I'm private. Yeah. You know? And every she, every decision you make, every person that you may have yes. cut off the road or say something crazy yes. to, and that's all televised. Everything is, 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 is coming back. And, she, and that's all she was saying, like, hey, man, are you sure you want to deal with this? And that's I, good. And that's, and to me, that was support. Now she would have did had we got on the show. If it would have happened, she would have did it. I'm sure yeah. just because we trying to enhance the brand. But nah, she ain't. She's like, bro, I'm concerned about you. Cause see, my wife don't like me being embarrassed. That's good. Yeah. See, I don't have a wife who who look at it and like, yeah, he need he need to get 
humbled. humbled. Oh, he need to get embarrassed. I see. I don't. I, I don't have that. Mm, have you seen that before? People. Y- yes. You've seen people married to people who yes. you've heard them say that that's the wife's goal. Yes. I'm just talking with guys. You know, like I said, I told you last time, my barbershop, that's my second church. Yeah. And, you know, you hear these stories and you'll be like, man, my wife, that's not my wife, you know. Give and, me an example of what you've heard, if you can recall, of a man saying my wife is trying to do X, Y, Z. That will cause embarrassment. Oh, man. Like when of if a woman like. One of the guys, the wife cleared the account and the credit cards and all that, well, he couldn't do nothing. So he going places now in this nice Maserati and he ain't got no money <laughs> and she ain't answering no phones. I mean, nothing going. I mean, that's, em- that's embarrassing. <laughs> like, you know, I don't, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> I'm one to really never get embarrassed. Like, I don't know what could be embarrassing <laughs> to me. I, it would just have to happen. But that's embarrassing. I'm pretty sure, you know, you're out here flossing, you throwing out here. And it's, I'm sorry, it's declined. It's declined. You got another one? It's declined. What about a third? <laughs> Three times the charm. No, three times decline. And so it's just, you know, that type of thing. Like, my wife, my wife ain't, she she ain't trying to bet. Nah, don't get me wrong. When we get, when I get home, oh, we, she's going to let me have it if it's something that she didn't let me have it about. Yeah. But I'm just saying in the public eye. That's good. I don't care how mad she is with me or how, you know, Full of disdain she may have for me right now. I like that word, disdain. Yeah, she not going to embarrass me. She's not going to embarrass me. I'm going to show another support. Why she say, ooh, boy, you on this support thing. Man, <laughs> let me tell you. Man, come on. What up, E? Um, <laughs> let's just say, and God forbid, I even hate saying this, but let's say something happened where I need to be taken care of. Right. Do you know my wife is going to take care of me? I'm talking about bathe me, all this here. Now, she's going to have a boyfriend. But <laughs> but that ain't the point. That ain't the point. <laughs> we talking about the support of me. <laughs> she, I'm just saying, because <laughs> she, she going she gonna to make sure I'm fed, <laughs> I'm bathed, and all that before she go out. Why you say she's got a boyfriend? Oh, come on. That's my wife. I know my wife. <laughs> Man, my wife want to get dressed. She like go out, you know what I'm saying, have a happy drink. Um, yeah, cause his happy drinks is. So, but you gonna have a boyfriend? Oh, oh, most definitely. You gonna be okay with it? I, I what can I do? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm burned down and heavy laden. I mean, I'm, I'm bedridden. I can't do nothing but say, man, thank you, and 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 pass me that lemonade or, or whatever. I mean, I can't do nothing. <laughs> but so, but but I'm just saying, but <laughs> but people can't look at how. This support look, <laughs> and because yours don't look that way, think you not being supported. Facts. I, in, even mm. in the last um part podcast, I mean the first show that I was on, I told you my wife held me down for five years. Yeah, she kept a job while I found myself. Mm. I was just out here lost, needed guidance, <laughs> direction, and she was holding down a job. Supporting me while I find myself, and then boom, I find myself. And she never emasculated you in that process. Not one time, not one time. She ain't never said, Marcus. I mean, Lord Jesus, I'm out here working real hard, and you ain't doing that. When you gonna do something? Not one time. Now, I don't know if they still make them like this. I don't know. Yeah, but not one time. And and I think man, you was having this conversation. Um. I'm talk like I got married with nothing. Right? I got married with nothing. She had nothing. I had nothing. So I think, I think in a sense. We'll put reference. Y'all had what age though? 24. Okay. So we got married at 24, but we met at 23. Right. And and what I mean by Y'all we got married a year later. Yeah, we got married in eight months. Yeah. And when we get married, when we get married, um, you know, when I'm saying had nothing, and I'll talk about this in my new show, Shameless Plug. But um, <laughs> well, so, no, no, drop the name of the new show. What's oh, new show is called Marriage is Major Surgery. Mm-hmm. Marriage is Major Surgery. But 
because we got married early, we had nothing but love and support. You know what I'm saying? See, I wonder about that. I wonder. Yeah. There's something beautiful when you get married at that young age where yeah. you have nothing. We had nothing. And but, then y'all have y'all build something that's the intangibles. Yeah. yeah. Because I didn't come to the table with nothing. She didn't come to the table with nothing. So we had to build the table. You feel me? And so we build this table so we don't have nothing but love and support because that's the only way we got here. So now I do, I'm not trying to make light of, but I do understand when you're older. Yeah. So like when you get married this next time yeah. and older people, as they get married, y'all coming in with stuff. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Y'all already have homes and, and you know, bank accounts and, and, and stuff yeah. like this here. And so for you all, what does the, what would that type of support look like? You, you understand what I'm saying? Because You've already uh, acquired so much. So when I'm sitting up here bragging about Erica Monique Wiley, that's because <laughs> she been like like this from day one. You see what I'm saying? Because that's all that's all we had I love was it. each other. And so, so hmm. of course, when you now you're 37, 38, or whatever, and you about to get married, and you know. When I hear people, yeah, I want to get my career together. And then the girls like, yeah, I want to get my stuff together. Yes. And I think sometime, okay, that's great. Y'all got it together. But now, when y'all finna bring it together, what, do, what does it look like? I don't need your support. You know? That's real. <laughs> you know, I'm just, just you know, just just throwing it out. But uh, I, but I need, but I need her though. So to this very day, is it because of what y'all built on a foundation standpoint where you have that need there? Because like they always say this, they say, would you rather need somebody or want somebody? How would mm -hmm. you answer that? Uh, would, you ever need your, would you rather need your wife or want your wife? Oh, I'm going to go with need. And, you know, it's crazy you bring this up because I'm, I'm, this is a topic in the show as well. Oh. When people say stuff like... Um, when they say stuff like, uh, how can I see it? Like, only reason why I'm still married, watch this, is because we got kids. Well, that's a good reason. That is a good reason. I mean, are, are you understand know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, uh, uh, only reason I'm still married because, you know, you know, he take care of everything. And so, where would I go if I leave? So the only reason I'm here is because he, he handled everything. Well, that's a good reason. It, it's, it's, I mean, we make stuff a negative. And I'm saying that because I'm finna answer your question with, I would rather need her. I need her, dog. You know what I'm saying? And so, so that's like, a, um, I don't know. You know, it's be like, oh, well, so he don't want her. He just with her because he need her. Oh, it's a good thing that I need, I need my wife. And my wife need her husband. I think. I mean, you straight? Because she going to see this. But I'm just saying, yeah. Because they we, always say that I don't want nobody to need me. I want somebody to want me. Yes, it's the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> I mean, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> because they say this. Because when the need changes, then you'll no longer want them. I'm going for Or you'll no longer need them. So if I say I need, like those examples mm -hmm. you just used, mm -hmm. I need my wife because um, they, you know, for the kids. Then mm -hmm. when the kids get older and move out, I don't need my wife no more. I don't need to help her take care of the kids no yeah, more. Yeah, you don't need it for the kids, but you're going to need it for something else is what I'm saying. The needs keep coming. Mm. That is, that they keep coming. I mean, okay, I don't need you for that, but now I need you for this. You see what I'm saying? I, it's so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with need. That that old uh, I want to, man, hey, cuz. Now you talking about something that changed. You talking about needs change. Wants change. change. Yeah, wants do. <laughs> wants change. I remember when I wanted. <laughs> what, what you wanted? What you wanted? Man, I remember when I wanted. I'm just talking about cars I yeah. wanted. I remember when I wanted, believe it or not, once upon a time in my life, I wanted to move to Hollywood. I mean, move to Cali and pursue, you know, film and all that type of stuff. Yeah. And guess what? I went out there after college, seen some people I knew, six people staying in one apartment, Yep. stacked on top of each other, 
I'm used to a certain level of creature comforts. I no longer want to go out there no more. You see how that won't change? I don't want to go out there. I like microwave popcorn. I like uh, <laughs> grapefruit juice, cherries, and watermelon in the refrigerator, plums, and peas. I like my own stuff. And I knew if I moved out there, I'm not going to have this here. Hey, who hey, who drunk my juice? And I'll let them. I don't... I, that won't change immediately for me. <laughs> immediately. I, and I no longer want it fame and fortune. I just want it fortune. <laughs> <laughs> I just want it fortune. Yeah, I just want to make money, take care of my family. <laughs> and we do some of the things we like to do with my friends and stuff, and I'm good. You know I want fame and fortune. No, anymore. I just want fortune. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, nah, that old fame, all they want to be famous. And I'll let change. When you say need your wife, mm-hmm. um, do you feel like you can't function without her? I can't. I can't. Really? I can't. Because they always say, listen, I mean, come on. You can make it without her. If she, if she left your life right now, you're yeah. a human being. You don't need her that bad. Now, don't get me wrong. <sighs> if I had to, of course. Right. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. she good, too. Yeah. But... But why? <laughs> I mean, that, I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, like why? Even I got a partner. I'm pretty sure I got a partner. <laughs> he been married about I think 16 years right now, and he tells me that um, man, he just think he want to get out of the marriage. You know, I just want to be gone. I say, man, did any you know anything happen? You know, blah blah blah. He's like, nah, I just ain't feeling it. This is what he said. I just ain't feeling it no more. <laughs> I said, you sound childish. Uh, he, said, he said that he ain't feeling it no more. Bro, feelings are fickle. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know that you're fickle? Yeah. Like, of course. I mean, I in 25 years, you know how many times I wasn't feeling it? I mean, I'm just, yeah. I'm just saying, I'm, yeah. I'm talking on here Oh, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah, in 25 years, I felt it a lot. Yeah. But if I capitulate to a feeling, and now I'm back in these streets, mm, I'm going to be in them too. Man, <laughs> what up? See you at church, son. You know, I'm going to be, <laughs> I'm going to be in them. And watch that. Then that feeling going to go down. Facts. And I'm going to look back and be like, bro, I had it. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I had it. I said this in my last, in my last special. Well, let me ask you this before you go. go this, what he said? Did he take your advice? We going to see. <laughs> oh, this is real time. Yeah, this is real time. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is like two weeks old. <laughs> yeah. We going to see. I mean, I don't. I don't know, but I was just telling him, I mean, before I get into that, I was just saying, bro, feelings are fickle. And, you know, just because you feel this way today don't mean you're going to feel this way next week, you know, and all that type of stuff. And come on, look, look, look what y'all done built. And now you just, oh, because I, I ain't feeling it. Like, I, that's for why I asked him, did something happen? Nothing has happened. It's just, hey, it's routine. It's, it's, it's mundane. And that's what's, that's what's crazy. Like, so <laughs> we love certain routines, and then when something else is routine, we have a problem with it. Mm. Okay, let me, get, let me show what I'm talking about. Oh, man, I'm getting to my show. Man, a lot of my show is from last time, too. <laughs> It's, it's crazy. I love it. But I like talking about it. I mean, on stage, you come across different. But I'm on the phone with a young lady who said that her relationship is routine. And she's sick of the routine. Yeah. Tired of the routine. Want something new. Yeah. Because that's just the world we live in. Yeah. Now. Just want something new. And so... um. I said, you tired of that routine? She's like, yeah, I'm just tired. I already know what he going to do before we do it. You know, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I said, um, <sighs> who pays the mortgage? She's like, oh, he pay that. I said, so that's a, he routinely pay it like every, every month. She's like, mm-hmm. I said, okay. 
y'all got kids. How, how, how does that work? She was like, well, I drop them off. He pick them up. So he pick them up every day. You ain't got to pick them up when you get off. Okay, he routinely pay the mortgage. He routinely pick up the kid. Do you have a problem with that routine? <laughs> she not. But that's different. No, it's not. <laughs> It's not different. It's a routine. You, <laughs> it's a routine. <laughs> but, but that part is that's permissible. That yes. that routine is cool. And now over here, he ain't spontaneous. He don't he don't like to go out. You know, you just want to drop everything, go to Vegas, and yeah. change it up, switch it up. And he ain't, he he ain't on that. And so, you know, it's just uh, I don't know. And then. This is what I was getting ready to say about what I said in this last thing. Relationships are seasonal. Okay, this is what we're talking about, right? I'm talking about support. I'm talking about needs and wants and all this. It's seasonal. Here's the problem. We respect seasons in every other aspect of life except a relationship. Watch this. When you was broke, before you had their future wife and before you was the Latarius with the, the playwright and all the stuff you did, before you did all that, you ain't had no money. Right. Safe to say? Yep. Did you ever say, I'm about to divorce my dreams? No. No. What you said was, can't wait for my season. That's exactly what I said. That's exactly what you said, right? That's exactly what I said. Are you in your, how's your season looking? <laughs> <laughs> look pretty good to me. I'm just saying, season looking pretty good. <laughs> season looking good. I'm just, but when you hit a bad season in a relationship, you end it. Peace. It's like yeah. you think it's the end of the world. That is true. So it's respected that you ain't got no money. You never say, oh, I'm going to divorce trying to make money. Or you ain't got no job or your, your purpose. I'm going to divorce trying to find my purpose or get a job. But a relationship go bad, I'm out. <laughs> and you never look at it like, hey, this is just a season. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a season. And then when you talk about people who have thriving and lasting relationships, you've been married how many years? 25. 25 years. Absolutely amazing. Going on 26 next month. If the Lord say the same. <laughs> what you said, black love is this day, day to day. day. <laughs> black love is day to day. And today is a good day. Talk to her before I came in here. She round that all that stepping and everything. She's having the time of her life out there oh, trying man. to relive. You know, my ex-wife is out there with her. Oh, yeah? Yeah. She, she had called me working on getting this house or whatever. I'm, okay. Uh, about to close on this house, and I hired nice. her as my, as my realtor. Nice. Um, which oh, that's brings, dope. Yeah, I hired as my realtor because I was like, I already found the house, and I was like, hey, you want to make some money? And she was like, heck, yeah. Mm. I said, all I need you to do is just handle the transaction. And she was like, absolutely perfect. You know, I ain't talked to him in about a year when I called up to do that. That's nice. Uh, and we just we can just pick up, trip out, do what yeah. we got to do, and go about the business. I love for him. Yeah. So yeah. it's just we just got a lot of respect. Yeah. But one thing she told me too that's a little convicting as I hear you talk about the way someone shows support mm -hmm. is that I used to say to her that she didn't support me. I said you don't support me, mm -hmm. and uh, because I expected her when I was doing t-shirts yeah. and I was doing you know sitting up at setting up at football games and stuff, selling yeah. stuff, and you wanted her to be with. there. I want to be right there with me doing it. <laughs> yeah. I want her to be. Whatever I was doing, I wanted you there with me while I was doing this grind together. I don't want to be out of here. At all. Yeah. One day she told me, she said, Latarius, I support you. She said, do I do I trip out? Like, where are you going? To, mm -hmm. do I have, where are you going now? How are you, who are you on the phone with? She said, I never gave you that pressure. I yeah. never trip like that. I never be like, what time you come home? She said, yeah. I support you in the way of giving you peace. And that's support. And I said... I didn't recognize that. Didn't recognize that. And she that. brought that up after I had filed for divorce. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, I was like, but I yeah. still want you to, so I want this. I want you to show up this way for me. Yeah. This is what I need. Mm -hmm. And, um, but that was a convicting statement because hearing what you're saying right now is saying that receive the support in the way the person shows it. When we started learning about love languages or whatnot, mm -hmm. people receive love differently. People sure. receive love. I needed words of affirmation. She wasn't the type of person that's going to talk like that. You right. know what I'm saying? She ain't the person that and I she need could to, probably grow to it. 100%. At that time, the season, the I wasn't willing to go ahead and let that season take place. 
place. For sure. Uh, and so it's interesting that when we say I do to people, we say I do with an expiration date, mm-hmm. not realizing, like you said, the seasons that people go through. You touched on something that we talked about on my live mm-hmm. uh, yesterday. Um, and they talked about this one woman jumped on live and she said, and I said, man, me and my boy Marcus talked about this. He's coming on the podcast uh, tomorrow. Mm. But about seasons that men and women go through from a sexual standpoint. Oh, yeah. To where that at the very beginning in their 20s and early 30s, yes. they over here, dudes running around like bunny rabbits. Yes. But then they start hitting the 40s and the 50s or whatever. They just like, can we cuddle? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, sir. And the woman like, oh. Yeah. You know, she trying to jump on you. tell me. But those seasons, if you're not navigating those seasons effectively, then you don't have the grace for each other while y'all are going through those individual seasons no doubt no doubt and you just said i mean that was you said something her supporting you sometimes is not bothering you you know what i'm saying yeah yeah Yeah, it's not even i'm not even going against the grain (laughs) you want me now i'm do your thing and now you do your thing well well, why you ain't right by me though why you not here sweating with me I, brother, I don't, I don't. Do you see these edges? I ain't trying. To, <laughs> I ain't trying to mess them up. Yeah, I'm supporting you by letting you. I ain't. I ain't giving you no pushback. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. friction. Do your thing. And she said, "They said I let you go chase whatever dream you have, and I don't. I don't ever buck the system." Oh, that was beautiful. And I was like, "But you need to be chasing it with me. Oh, you need yeah. to be right here with me. I need you yeah. grinding with me." Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy, but that's me. You know, from twenty eight to 30, yeah, yeah. 37 or whatnot. Yeah. It's like I didn't understand the value of what support looked like, and allow the people to support you in the way that they show up best. Yeah, and I think last time when I talked about when me and my wife got separated, yeah, I think I I think I had the same sentiments that you having because comedy had came, and it's like I wanted her to jump in it with me as well. Yeah, right. And comedy was my thing. Yeah. And she was just, you know, she didn't she didn't bother me about it or nothing. But I want, man, you should be getting my website together, getting my hair shot. You know, I'm, I'm turning her into an agent, <laughs> to a manager. She like, bro, you was just a bank teller <laughs> Thursday. And now you a comedian <laughs> Sunday. And now you expect me now to be an agent or a manager to a comedian. And you know, and that's another thing we don't give pe- we don't give people the grace for all the changes. When my wife met me, I was a bank teller. Oh God, man! Since then, I have worked at Back Rack, Houston Trunk Factory, BET, middle school teacher, high school teacher, college recruiter, college volleyball coach. Uh. Oh, uh, uh, man, I done had so many. You see what I'm no, saying? So she no, you had, a radio I, show? Radio, I mean, right. Comedian? So, oh, yeah, I'm just going on, but I'm just talking about it early, in the early going. So you look at all this stuff. Bro, who are you today? And you think I'm just supposed to just jump into whoever you are. Oh, did that's who you are today? Okay, let me get in that mode. <laughs> man, come on, man. <laughs> man, we when you put it like stop. that, it's so crazy. We gotta stop because it's the truth. It's like in each profession that the the spouse takes on, it, it requires the the other spouse to have to do something different in the yes. shift. You know what I'm saying? Like even when you have people that have spouses that go join the military or whatnot, mm-hmm. and you're with that person, and they go, you know, they they join the military. Now your whole life changes because of that, whole or life. even some lesser where someone gets a job promotion or a career change when they have to relocate yep. now the world that they knew in whatever city that they're living in they go join that spouse and go mm-hmm. join them in the other city or yep. people that i know who they have they're bi-coastal and they have their spouse living in a whole nother city or state mm-hmm. and then they see each other you know seasonally or however that works yep. it's like it's just or you get somebody that some of my actor friends that are married the mm-hmm. person goes shoot a movie they're gone for two months two months you know three saying? months yeah and that's the life that you have but <laughs> you're having people or athletes you're the the spouse has to adjust if they are willing to support that person in that mm-hmm. way and hold down the fort until they return when i graduated from texas university with my bachelor's um and that's when i had i met i met my wife my first year in grad school right the, the next semester that's when i met her and watch this i hadn't planned on going to grad school only reason why I went to grad school was because I went from the graduation line 
to the unemployment line. Both of them lines long. Let me tell you, both of them. And my last name was W. Wiley. <laughs> so that graduate, I was at the end of the graduate because I wasn't Sigma Cum Laude and Magna Cum Laude. I wouldn't even thank you, Laude. I would just, <laughs> I graduated, right? So I go back, just enroll, get the master's. But really it was for the loan, you know, because I had never took out a loan. I had full scholarship all my years in college. Well, sports? Yeah. No. Yes, but no. I was an athletic trainer. You got a scholarship been an athletic trainer? Full scholarship. Who did that? Who taught you that? My high school coach, God rest his soul, uh, Michael John Vara, Willow Ridge High School. He told me as a freshman, if you stick with me, I will get you a scholarship. I had scholarships to UT, A&M, all these places. I didn't pass the SAT. I didn't make high enough. So that's why I had to go to a community college for two years. Full scholarship, though. Angelina Community College. Shout out Lufkin, Texas. Then I went to uh, Texas Southern University. Full scholarship. As and a it, trainer? As a trainer. It paid, it, it, it paid for school all the way up through, through, my, through my master's program. Yeah. I think you found the cheat code. I ain't never heard nobody get a scholarship. I'm as the a only man who had a volleyball scholarship at Texas University, but it was athletic training. <laughs> yeah. But watch this. So I'm in grad school. I don't want to be there because I've already overachieved as it relates to educationally. And <laughs> so I got my bachelor's. Yeah, I got my I had a, associates and, and a bachelor's. I'm good. I'm Come good. on, man. E people in my family was like, what, bro? Really? When you get out of school? <laughs> You know this ain't what we do, but uh, <laughs> but anyway, so I I'm in the master's program, and my wife to my support doing all my work. That support, Marcus. Yes. <laughs> but watch this. I'm gonna show you what's, what's crazy. My wife is doing all my work. She done dropped out of school. What? What? <laughs> oh boy! What are you talking about is that support? Watch this now. My wife, who comes to me and said, "Bay, I don't want to do school no more." That's what she told me. I don't want to do school. I'm just one her thing. You know, school ain't for everybody. And you was married. We married. We married. I met her. You know, cause we got married fast. Yeah. So she said, "I don't want to do school." I said. Hey, I ain't got no problem with it, but you know, a woman that don't work is unattractive to me. You know, <laughs> that's what I said. She said, oh, no, I'm going to have a job. I said, okay, well, go. Cool. I mean, you know, I ain't tripping. <laughs> so, and so, yeah, unattractive to me. Yeah, a woman that don't work. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's unattractive. Now, I ain't talking about if you got kids and you and you do it, because yeah. that's work. Yeah. I'm just talking about at this time, it's just me and her. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah, I, I consider that very lazy. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, that's, that's just me now. I'm, no, call I'm, it I old agree, school, I call it you, whatever. I agree with you on that. But that's just me. Yeah. And so anyway, my wife quit school, working, of course. I was already working, but not jumped into the work field. I'm in grad school, and she's doing all my work. Now, you won't even do your work. But you're going to do my work. <laughs> but you're going to do my work. You're going to drop out of college and then do my work. My wife wrote all them papers. My master's degree should have my wife's name on it. I tried to see if they could do it. Because all I did was the oral presentations. This is what I'm good at right here. <laughs> but she, <laughs> pen to the paper, put them together. That's her. You know, my wife was, uh, when we were married, no, we were dating during that time. She was working on her master's in entrepreneurial studies. Okay. And she would have me read this because she didn't like reading. Mm -hmm. So I would read I would read her work and read the books and I would highlight the stuff that I felt like would be on the test. Yeah. She did exactly what I what I had highlighted. Uh, it made a 98 or something on the sign. And she's like, how did you know this? She said, uh, I ain't spent the day in college. I ain't spent yeah. the I ain't spent nothing. She's like, how do you know this stuff? And I was just like, I don't know. It just makes sense. But I loved reading yeah. and I love anything about entrepreneurship so she would just have me read certain but stuff but you were writing yeah. yeah and so I would I would work on stuff uh, her assignments work on the uh, you know what she wrote for her assignments whatnot, and she would just be like she yeah. like you 
But the, even in that, that's what's so beautiful about the bond is that mm-hmm. you start showing how you each other can, you know, support each other and show up for each other for in, sure. in their weakness. For but sure. when you manage that properly, the 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 two people can come together and say, let me excel in my strength and you cover me in my weakness and vice versa. And yeah. then that's where you get the best of both worlds and have teamwork. Yeah. That's what true support is about. For sure. And then allow people to do what they do. You know, you can't condemn how people support you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just like almost like gift giving in a sense. Like, you, all you do is, I do it buy me stuff. Oh, that's the, that's the problem. Like, (laughs) like, you know, cause you know, if my wife want to do something, she going to come to me, hey, babe, this is what I want, X, Y, Z, what, man, or this is what I want or something. Man, mm-hmm. I'm Johnny on the spot with it. I'm Johnny on the spot. I mean, I don't waste no time. I don't withhold nothing that I can give because I don't want God withholding nothing from me that he can give me. <laughs> that, that he can give me. I'm, I'm just saying that's just how, how I rationalize things. You yeah. know, I, I ain't, oh, now she don't deserve this yet. No, no, no. If I can get it, if I can... If I can take care, man, he it is. Is she a type that she probably type don't ask for much at all? She don't, not at all. I man, I shop for my wife. I shop, man. Every time I go out of town, I, I come home with something because I'm I, I walking walking the mall, and I don't mean major stuff. Yeah, just because I got a type wife who who can go in a thrift show and thrift store and come out of there. Just, huh, you see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she like, oh, she go from zero to 100 with the fashion. So <laughs> it's not even no, I got to be name brand yeah. and all that. But, man, I see different things. I get stuff. Man, people always ask, hey, where did you get that purse? Where you get? Man, Marcus. Marcus got that somewhere. Marcus, you, know, blah, blah. you know, but that's my way, you know, not just, I ain't just talking support, but that's my way. I like to shower and show her, man, I appreciate you. For how you support me. How does she support you? Y'all got kids, you got a family. Man, how does she support you? She makes sure my, my children straight. She got them, she got them little cats in line. She do a, Explain what that means. You said got them in line. What you mean by that? I mean, she got them on the right path, you know, because she's the dominant parent. She's the dominant parent because I travel so much. So what I had to learn how to do is when I get back home. Stop trying to undo, undo her system. That's you know good. what I'm saying? That's maturity. Now, I don't like her system. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. I don't like it. What What do you not like? What What system are you talking about? What I mean, system? just just if I go in my daughter's room, like, I want the sock drawer to be at the bottom. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying this is, <laughs> this is all type of little things. I mean, I want the sock drawer at the bottom. I won't, you know, it's just the way that I would do stuff. <laughs> but, hey, bro, that ain't her way. You feel me? So, because at first I used to be like, man, man, why, man, why you, man, why? But now I'm going to support your way. This your way. Who even though it's backwards. I mean, it's, it's messed up to me. But uh, <laughs> I'm going to support your way. You know, I'm going to do that. And, uh, and, I, and her decisions that she make. Hey, I took Chase's phone, or yeah. I told Chase he can't. And Chase might call me dad. Mom, man, 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 mom tripping, man. I mean, she just be getting mad, and, and then I have to go. Okay, but what she say? You, you ain't gonna be able to go, right? So yeah, you ain't gonna be able to go. Hey, man, get your attitude together. Good. You know what I'm saying? Good. Because if that's a decision she made, yep. And support your decision. Did you have to learn that? Oh, yes. At first, you used to what? Come and undermine her authority. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm the man of the eyes. Now, now, what's going on right here? Now, <laughs> and I, I ain't been home in a week. And then just sit, and coming in there trying to change everything. And, hey, man, 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 what's going, on? You know, so I've gotten better. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's still, still gr- growing in, in that area. I mean, so I ain't trying like I got it together. So with no your son, you come and get, get come to his defense and be like, "Man, go and let him go." Yeah, well, my wife will say, "Hey, I told Chase he can't do the well that now unless you." She'll throw that, and then I throw it right back. Hey, is that what you want? You don't want man? To, hey, then I'm 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 on your side. I ain't for these kids. 
I'm not. I'm talking about my own. I'm not. Look at me. I am not for them kids. I am for my wife. I ain't for them kids. Yeah. I mean, you finna fall out over these kids. If you don't want them to have no phone or go nowhere, they just don't have no phone or go nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the end of that story. So, what you think about that when parents try to become their kids' best friend? Um. Uh, well, <sighs> so my wife, we have two kids, of course, Chase, fifteen, Charlie, five. For the longest, Chase was our only son, and I would be gone at that when Chase was born. I, you know, I'm on your London House morning show, man. I'm traveling. I'm doing. I'm we. I'm getting it at that time. Yeah. And so I. So she's really, really close to her son because they would be at home yeah. all the time. You know, together, I mean, she'd take him to the park. She was doing a whole lot. You know, so you said her son instead of yeah. our son. No, that's her son. <laughs> Chase, Chase, her son. He our son, but that's her son. <laughs> no, I mean, that is her son. <laughs> and so now when we get Charlie, when Charlie come into, the, into, into play, I'm, I'm, there, I'm there more. You know, I'm there more. Yeah. So, you know, we have this thing, you know, where, where I like, oh, there you go with that with your son, <laughs> and then her thing is, see you, you come in here with Charlie, cause you know Charlie, my friends used to say girls change, change, change the you know the daddy. Yeah. You see how how the daddy is really soft. Yeah. And then Charlie, she know how to play me. She played me like a funky piano. You hear me? She come right in there, daddy. And all that, and I'll be like, hey, whatever you want. <laughs> I come in there, ice cream, Erica come in there. Why don't you give me this ice cream? It's 11 o'clock at night. I'm Erica, the girl said she wants some ice cream. You act like <laughs> she asked for crack cocaine or something. It's, <laughs> it's ice cream, player. Well, you're going to be up with her all night. You got, you know, and all that. And, uh, okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like it's crack cocaine. Yeah, it's, it's ice cream, butter pecan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, cause Charlie at night out. She gonna be in the club. She gonna be definitely be a, a, a young lady who goes to the clubs. Cause she is up late to be. She fine now, but she been up late since three. Just we in the bed. We look. I'm asleep. Erica sleep. We look up. Charlie's watching TV. Gotta go to school in the morning. And still, our parenting game is. Whew. You said she gonna be in the club when she got older. Oh yeah, she'll be in the club for sure. <laughs> Yeah, she like dancing. She's a good dancer already. Uh, that's something I gotta have. I'm concerned about, and I ain't talking about praise dancing either. I'm talking about dancing. <laughs> I'm talking about dancing, dancing. Marcus, what's the poem? It's it's a song that's out that you were talking about, and, and uh, say it as a spoken word poem. Oh, you talking about Pound Town? <laughs> I come from Pound Town. <laughs> yeah, it's a. Yeah, I don't want to mess up your podcast, but as we was talking off camera, the uh, I was like, oh man, these lyrics and the pop, such popularity and everything, pop culture is, is pound town. What are some of the lyrics and, and, and edit it? But what what are some of the lyrics of said song? Oh, I don't even know if I can edit it. <laughs> these people know <laughs> pound town. No, just some pink and some brown. It just, it's a, it's, I mean, I got Christian ears. <laughs> and, and it just burned my, it just burned my Christian ears. Well, I said, I ain't never heard this song before. <laughs> I was crying laughing. You said, it was like, what are the, uh, yes. are the generation listening to? What right are they now? listening to? And, and no disrespect to the lady who wrote it and performed it, but I'm just saying, as an elder statesman, Ooh, I had to clutch my pearls, and I don't even have pearls. Clutch my cross. This was he's an elder statesman. Yeah, keep me near the cross. Yeah. <laughs> so your wife supports you by making sure that she got the kids in check, making sure that you don't have to worry about that. I ain't does got to have, worry about that. My mom that? lived with us. Oh, and that's a major. Okay, boom. See, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, life takes. Yeah, man, life. You 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 can't plan. And predict life. Yeah. Right? And so when my father died in 09, my mom, I felt like, was getting ready to go to. Because hum, I'm an only child. Her my dad. You know what I mean? When he left, she out in the house not by herself. Yeah. I felt like she 
Felt like the cheese was slipping off her cracker a little bit. <laughs> and uh, so I go to my wife and I just tell her, man, look, um, I want to move my mom in. But I want to buy a bigger house so we can coexist. I know yeah. it's hard for, for our color, black people, mm-hmm. to be under one roof. Yeah. Hispanics do it, no problem. Yeah. Asians do it, no problem. You know, but when we all got to be under one roof, you know, our whole thing is get soon. I'm, as soon as I'm 18, I'm out of here. You know, we, <laughs> so, so when we, <laughs> so my wife, which, watch this, nobody wants to live with their in law. Nobody. This don't mean because the in law is bad. Yeah. Just, you want your own privacy. I just want my own stuff. Yeah. But because I'm my only child, I, I travel a lot. I got worried about two households. You know, my wife was very gracious. Now, I had to sell on it a little bit. You know, hey, my mama cook. You know, at the time, my wife was still fixing. And so, <laughs> no, she had probably start cooking by the end. But, uh, but you know, I'm saying my mama cook. You know, my mama clean. You know, I grew up in a house that like a model home. And it wasn't even our home. We we. We we renting houses. Yeah. Back when I was coming up. Just took care of it. But shoes. we just took care of these people houses. I mean, it was a couple of them. We moved by five times. So but all of them. We left them better than we found them. And That's um good. so my mama gonna clean. I say you got babysitter. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, 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 and, and it's gonna be bigger. It's gonna be a bigger crib. You ain't, ain't like that. And so, you know, and and my wife, my wife take care of my mother. I mean, take care of my, and that is supportive to, you know what I'm saying? To me. And, and, and so, dog, I would be out of line to try to act like even when me and my wife ain't seeing eye to eye or she did something I don't like. Man, my mom been living with us since 2014. It's been nine years, right? And she take care of my mama. Doctor's appointment. I mean, just... Treat her like it's her mama. Has she built a stronger bond with your m- mom than you do? Currently? Oh yeah, they hate me. <laughs> yeah, they 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 like a they like a united front. You know they 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 girls. I thought my mama was gonna rub off on Erica, and Erica didn't rub it off on my mama. My mama around here with black fingernail polish and extensions and a hair, bamboo earrings, at least two pair. I mean, he lashes and all this type. Mama, grow up. You are seventy two years old around here. <laughs> Trying to run with this youngster. You said with lashes. Yeah, she got lashes, man. All that. So, and that's you know that's just what that did, type of no, stuff. No, tell me what did that mean to you? Because I know that hit. everything. Yes, to see that your wife is taking care of your first love. Yeah. A mother typically is a man's first love. Mm-hmm. What did that mean to you to see your wife step up to that and support you in that way? Everything, man, because. I've always had good perspective and I know that, you know, let's say if she was totally against it, I couldn't have, I, cause I've been like, yeah, I probably would have been totally against it too. If it was, the, if the, she was on the other foot, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I had, I was very clear with, I didn't just expect it to be like, oh, okay. Yeah. That's your mom. So yeah, it's, it's all good now, nah, you know? And so the fact that she did it, and I remember in the beginning, it was some rough patches because she would want to maybe say something, but, hey, that's your mama. I don't want to. And I had to tell her, hey, this your house. That's good. You empowered her. Yeah, this your house. Yeah. You know, and my mama loved my mama, but this your house. So you ain't got to tiptoe around. I appreciate you respecting the fact, but you ain't got to tiptoe around and you got something to say. Say it. I grew up in a house where you say you yeah. you could say it. I grew up in a house as a kid. If I ain't like something, I call a family meeting. We all go to the tape. I had to be respectful, but but that's uh, we could have a family meeting. Man, I need to talk to everybody, but there's only two people. I need to talk to all y'all. And <laughs> and it was just you and your mama, right? No, my mom and my dad. But I'm oh, just okay. saying, there's only two other people, and they come to the table like, no, whatever that, whatever you want is no. <laughs> and I I be like, man, y'all gotta. Y'all got to stretch this curfew back a little bit, cuz. I mean, <laughs> come on. Ain't nobody coming in at midnight no more. I'm just getting started at midnight. Come on. At midnight was when Paul and Silas prayed, but midnight is when I'm just getting 
<laughs> just get just jumping. Yeah, just start <laughs> jumping. Lights don't come on the two, mama. Come on, y'all got to li- loosen up a little bit. Let me live, prodigal son. You see, how he came old, back. How, how old were you when you that? Were you saying that? Fifteen. Yeah, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, and then and then and then summer in college when I would come home. They they would say at college you did that, but when you in my house, yeah, whole thing. It'd be different. My my mama rules. She got rules to be like uh. Uh, like my curfew was one o'clock for college, right? It was yeah. one o'clock, and I was like, "Mom, I don't go out to eleven when I'm in college." Well, you're not in college when you're here. And then I'd be like, "And I ain't had no car at first, so my mom would be like, and have my car home at eleven. I'd be like, "Have your car home at 11. But that's her way of not letting me <laughs> like find you a ride. Don't take my car out there. <laughs> hey, how's my curfew at one? But have your car home at eleven. <laughs> oh, so I said I'll let to say so now I relish. In telling my mama, hey, cut them lights off in now. <laughs> I love it now. I walk in there, hey, who hey, hey, who are you in there whispering on this phone to? Is this a little dirty deacon at your church or something? Who you in here? Oh man, I oh I goes in it's on it. Yeah. Dirty deacon at the church. Yeah, I goes in <laughs> on it. Nah, yeah. I, it's payback. The big payback well, too. So what's your mama curfew? What you give? <laughs> <laughs> Man, my mama don't even go nowhere. That's the that's the she barely even go. I don't know where she go is Sam's <laughs> Beauty Shop and Church. That's it. That's it. How does it feel as a man to be able to take care of your mom? That's what I always wanted to do. I yep. used to tell my parents, hey, I'm gonna buy y'all a house. Yep. So my dad was around for that. I bought, bought him a house in 05. Good. Salute. And uh and uh man that was like a big day cuz I ain't never see my 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 dad break down crying. And so that was um that was major. Yeah, that was major. Cuz I thought you know to buy your parents a house you had to be an athlete yep. or a big time entertainer or something yep. and really all you had to do is discipline yourself and you know cut back on some of your um Lavishness and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and buy it, you know. So your dad so, broke down crying. Man, my dad broke down crying. Cause broke down. First time you ever saw him cry. Man, not the first, but first time I saw him cry like that. I done seen him at church. Yeah. You know, get the little ti. He gonna yeah. stop it with the nap with the handkerchief yeah. with his initials on him. You know, that's an old school pals. They had their initials on the hang. And uh, but this time him talking, <laughs> everybody not crying. I was like, oh man, y'all got me in here crying. Did you surprise him? Yeah. Well, I told him I said, hey, um, yeah, cause they I had I had just bought them a bedroom set. No, I'm lying. I'm lying about that. And when they got in the house, I'm lying. I told him I said, hey, get what y'all gonna take out of here, which was their living room set. They had just bought a living room set. And I said, and they gonna put that in the in the TV room upstairs. But I said, I'm gonna buy y'all new furniture and everything. That's what you told him. You was buying new furniture. Yeah, I'm buy y'all new furniture and all that. And so my mom, um, you know, you know how house buying go. Yeah. The clothing got pushed back, and my mama was like, "Boy, you got us packing up all this stuff, and we ain't going nowhere." I was like, "Ooh, oh yeah, little faith. You you a first lady? You probably be a Christian." Whoa, you are horrible when it comes to uh, believing, <laughs> believing you. And so I had drove him by the house because I tried to surprise him, but the, it got it got pushed back. <laughs> they thought you was bluffing. They thought I was bluffing. I said, "This is the house. It's just this high. We ain't because we ain't never bought a house, <laughs> so <laughs> so they don't know the the process, the process and the procedures." And so yeah, so when so we you bought them, when they we, first and only house. Mm-hmm. Yep. S- salute, King. That's beautiful. I appreciate That's it. That's why he cried. He's yeah. like, my son came yeah. and honored me in this way. Yeah. But I told him, you still the man of the house. So light bill, gas bill, <laughs> water bill, uh, cable bill, them still your bills. Now, nah, I'm, I'm taking care of the, the, the house, the mortgage. But, <laughs> but those bills are yours. <laughs> I'm still won't let you be a man. <laughs> How old were they when that happened? Oh, that was 05. Well, my mom is 72. I ain't good with math. So But but your dad was your dad was up in age where he was still working and all that. He was still preaching. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, still pastoring, yes. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. That's beautiful, man. I salute you. So when yeah. you think of support, as we continue to wrap this up, yeah. how would you encourage people to make sure that they frame what support looks like to them and to be respectful of those um, giving them support in their own way? Who oh, you said a mouthful. You kind of intelligent. Um, you know, I just think, I, you know, I just think life will dictate what needs to be done, you know, it's no cookie cutter way of, of supporting people. Right. I just think, you know, if you into your person, then you know what they need. And then you also know what they don't need. What they don't need right now is for me to be all on their neck yeah. about another, another job or, yeah. or, or another Big plan they done schemed up, yeah. you know. And then also, if you see it that 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 they need help with something, you know, then you you kind of do that. You kind of do that as well. So I just, you know, I don't really plan stuff like that. I think you just let life dictate it, and you see it, and then you feel the void. I mean, that's what they say. Entrepreneurship is it's a it's a need that need to be filled. Yeah. And so I think you you feel it. And um How would your wife say you support her? <sighs> you want me to call? Now, uh <laughs> what I'm a, what I am for my wife, I think what what she would say is um I'm a good listener. And when she asks me a question or what I think or advice about something, I'm going to give her all the perspectives that I have come up with. Yeah. I'm just ain't talking outside of my neck. I'm going to sit there. I'm going to think on it. Then I'm going to, you know, give her all of that. Then, of course, I support her um, financially. You know, she don't, um, my wife don't worry about bills. I, I saw my grandfather. Um, my grandmother never worried about, I never see my grandmother worrying about a bill even talk about a bill. <laughs> and that's my wife. Like, she ain't thinking about it. Hey, you go out town every weekend. You mean tell me I got to worry about that too? And so I think um, support her definitely. Um, so she, when she went to a Delta that. convention, she was just like, she book it, going about a business. She ain't got to go ask you, hey, can I get this amount of money? Can I pay for this? You just, she just. No, she got a card. I mean, yeah. you know what I'm saying? She going to go, she going to do her thing. But I mean, now, she need to, she, you got to put a, Listen, you got to put a woman on some type of parameter. Nah, you, hey, I know your card is limitless. Uh, however, however, in this season, <laughs> yeah, this how much you can spend. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, this this how much. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know. Well, was she wild out? Not at all. My wife is not that. She, she's not that. Um, She's not that chick. So why you say you have to give the, uh, the, give the disclaimer? So she will remain the chick that she is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she won't wild out. Yeah. Yeah. Marcus, what you got coming up? Man, the, my new tour, Marriage is Major Surgery, starts September the 1st all the way to December 31st. Uh, people are getting their dates. kind of like last year when I did Grown Great Forgiven. It was the 1st through the 31st. I wrote two shows in the pandemic, and this is the second show. And um, it's a good show, and I'm uh, looking forward to it. What can people look forward to in this thing? Because just talking to you, um, we talked about this last year, Mm -hmm. and we talked about this tour coming up, Mm -hmm. and you have a different mission with Mm -hmm. this tour. Yeah. Explain that. So Marriage Major Surgery was based off of um, me reading Genesis and – you know, people think when God put man and woman together, it was at a wedding when really it was a surgery, mm. you know, uh, put Adam to sleep. And I know it's major because anytime you use anesthesia, uh, it's, it's, it's serious. Yeah. And so I think uh, my perspective on this particular show is, <laughs> is people, when you married, it's surgery. It's like you're trying to get well. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so I just want folk, folk to have their eyes open. 
surgery is not fun, but it's also, you ask some people who've had surgery, they'll tell you it's the best thing ever. I mean, you know, and so you're going to have some, you know, you're going to get cut on and you're going to get, it's it's a lot, but it's, it's, it's great. And I just want people to be, have their eyes wide open because I think your, your podcast, I think do, does a good job of people being transparent and telling their stories and, right. and, you know, giving some real, but there are more other podcasts out here where I listen to and I go, Oh my God, are you serious? Yep. Yep. This is the attitude towards, towards the marriage. Yeah. You know? And so I just yeah. want to make sure, you know, I'm just telling me and my wife's story and, uh, and it's laced with a bunch of jokes and you know, all that. Marriage is major surgery. Marriage is major surgery. Uh, tour kicks off in September, September running 1st. all the way through December. All the way to December 31st. And I already got, out. I'm already booked September 1st and December 31st. Now nah, go get your date. <laughs> so you picked the first, you already booked the first and last date. Uh, the first and last date I already booked. Right now, I think I have maybe nine dates. I reveal the dates August 1st. Um, and so churches connect to you by going to your website, go to the and website, then buying a date. And then buying a date. Yep. I love it. I love the I love the formula that you have with your with your tour, and yeah. it seems like God just breathes over it, and Man. you just find yourself gone, and you do what you do. Yeah. And I love how sometimes uh, where we're waiting on a seat at the table, God yeah. gives us ingenuity to be able sure. to go get your own hammer, your own wood, and no you go doubt. build your own table. And no that's doubt. what you've done, King, is Thank that you. you built your own table. You can go on tour whenever you feel like it. You're ex you're insanely talented. Thank you. So you don't even run out of material. So you can always continue to create new shows. Um, it, it, it's an amazing thing, which I was saying that I was at the Stella Awards mm -hmm. uh, last week, and I was like, I, I need I need Marcus Wiley to to host the Stellar Wars. Man. So that's what I'm believing God for. I'm putting it on this episode. I'm believing <laughs> God that you'll be able to host the Stellar Wars. That would be absolutely phenomenal. That'd be great. Yeah. And I want to do my own writing too, though. But just saying. <laughs> Why they be writing their own, they be writing your stuff for you? I mean, you know they they be having writers and. <laughs> uh, did you know I was hosting? I mean. <laughs> Like I could do a better job. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a better I job, but I'm I wanted to comedian. fit me though. Yeah, I'm a yeah. comedian, so let me do what I do. Yeah, yeah, that'll be amazing. <laughs> well, listen, uh, they can find out your tour dates on what site? Uh, MarcusDWiley.com. MarcusDWiley.com. Make sure you follow this king. Make sure you subscribe to. You have a newsletter. People still do newsletters. I don't have one. Oh, I don't either. Well, <laughs> ever, go, go to this website. Make sure that you find out a date that's coming near you and support this king. Uh, Marcus, listen, you know, I enjoy talking to you, chopping it up yes, with sir. you. Your last episode went absolutely ridiculous and crazy. Yes, uh, several viral videos from that episode. Uh, thank you for just being an authentic and genuine brother. Thank you for everything. I appreciate you. And, uh, Congratulations on everything. Thank you, King. I've been watching your move. It's, it's looking good. Thank you so much. Yes, God sir. is my publicist. You know, that's what I always say. Already. There it is. So y'all give it up for my brother, Marcus Wiley, y'all. Ladarian thrusted suddenly into Child Protective Services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name, the likelihood of ever being adopted, yep, you guessed it, slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? 
Join the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care. Should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse. I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm LaTaris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Man, let me tell you something. I love, man, when I say I love cracking up with Marcus Wiley, that brother is so, so dope. So anytime you see him on tour, I'm telling you, take it from me, you do not want to miss this brother. He he just never fails. Um, so I know y'all want to have his wife on with him, but... Um, I think we tackled that subject matter effectively about why. You know, a lot of people, you got to allow people to be who they are. And his wife is just the type that just doesn't like the public eye. So we got to respect on that. But here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future queen. Dear future wifey, I will support you in ways unimaginable. I will cover you in every sense of the word. Emotional, spiritual, and physical support will be your portion. Rest in my covering. Know that you no longer have to be strong. Rest in your femininity and allow my masculinity to wrap you like a warm blanket on a winter's night. Support is defined as bear all or part of the weight of to hold up. Yeah, I like that. I like that definition. Bear all or part of the weight of to hold up that part. Your future hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.